Hi everyone, I'm Josh. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Zachary Ying and the Dragon Republic by Jiron J. Zhao. And this is a middle grade that released in May, and I was granted an arc from NetGalley, which I'm very grateful for. So I want to take the time to talk about it and review it. It is essentially a fantasy mythological retelling, or not even really retelling, like a, a mixed use of mythological stories, or mythological history from China, to tell this larger middle grade story. And so without further ado, let's get into what, what I thought of the book. So I first heard about the book from Jesse from Both Times and Books because their channel hosts the Non-Binary Book Club every month and I heard it was being done and I realized it was a new release and I might be able to get it on NetGalley and once I did, it prompted me or basically it made it easier for me to fit it into my TBR uh, given the way I like to approach books. But the point is, is that I was really excited to be able to get into this book because one, I don't get in, I don't read a lot of middle grade and this was an opportunity to explore middle grade book uh, that I had that, that seemed to have a lot of hype behind it, and I was really excited going into it. And I, I should say that my background, like I said, is not in middle grade, so I don't know how to accurately, you know, judge this book from that perspective. But I will say I didn't dislike it, but I also didn't feel head over heels for it. Where what did I think of it? Let's start with, I guess, a background of what the story is really getting about. So I mentioned already it's basically about this boy who finds out he has some roots for ancient Chinese emperor. And <clears throat> what happens is in the story, very early on, this is the basic premise, he gets visited by this the spirit of his of his ancient his ancient emperor and he finds out he has this connection and at the same time something happens to his mother like gets kidnapped in some some form or other which means that he has to team up with this ancient emperor spirit to hunt down the monsters that did it and try and, and, and <clears throat> essentially I guess save her. And while that plot is there <sighs> I'm trying to say, part of the problems I had, the problems I had with the book was that it felt like it was very much more about the world building than it was about the story itself. And while the plot was there, I never felt like much effort was put into making me care about the characters, or even like the main character or his mother. The fact that he he lost her, I should care. And part of me wonders if perhaps that's just the middle grade narrative, and and it, it's designed to hook a middle grade reader, and so it's not going to be as effective for me. I don't know how to judge this. <clears throat> So I'd be happy, I would love, I'd rather, some input from, from other adult readers like myself who maybe are more familiar with Bill Grade, if maybe that is just, you know, something to do with, with me or if it's the book itself. And I don't want to say it's objectively bad because of that. But from the mythological side, it was really quite fascinating. I mean, this felt like Jiron J. Zhao was essentially trying to provide us with, or really they were just having a lot of fun with uh, Chinese mythology and trying to create this really unique and well um, well crafted world for us to explore and have fun in and that really is where the strength of the book lies is this ability to make use of this, of this Chinese uh, mythology to to create a, a new story basically and what I really liked about it was that I felt there were a lot of connections to other books and I don't know <clears throat> how much of that is really just the leeching of, Amer of American culture from other non-Western cultures. That is to say, the themes that seem to be similar to books that I'm about to mention in the States, in American literature that I've read. I don't know if that's unique, if they're just pulling from some American literature references as well, or if maybe that American literature, which is kind of colonized to begin with. What I'm thinking of is like American gods. If you ever read that, it's about general gods in America or in the world being created largely by thought, by by this idea of, of the fact that we believe in them, it makes them real. I know it's not unique to American gods, but it's a central premise, and that really is is the setup for this world. I mean, these gods are are driven by belief, and I thought it was really interesting seeing that sort of being a, f a fundamental or underlying premise of this world, and it felt like an I don't know if it was an homage or they just a call back to that. Maybe it's wrong of me, what I'm trying to say, to credit American gods for coming up with that idea. And that's what I think of when I, when I hear that. Other thing was that because it's Chinese mythology, I don't have a, a large background in that, but I did just finish reading the Poppy War trilogy, and I, I could see a lot of similarities. And honestly, I think having coming from the Poppy War trilogy probably prepared me for some of this. Like it made me more familiar with, say, the Water Dragon, which was new to me when I read the Poppy War trilogy. It was just a really exciting to I guess to explore that but for me that was the most exciting part because I couldn't care for the characters I found the story like just meh. It, it, I kept thinking to myself this reminds me of reading Seasonal Fears this year one of my favorite it was anticipated books rather and while I loved it for what it was 
I recognize it was very flawed, I think, especially from a storytelling perspective, because it was just very much about a world building, expanding the world and more than it was actual plot. And the difference there, though, is that it was a companion novel to a book that did the work and really got me invested in the world and the characters. And I don't have that for this book, which I guess made the fact that it's so heavy on the world building more than anything else harder for me to care about which I found myself getting detached, which is really disappointing. At the same time, when I was reading this, I was at a conference, I was traveling in the States, and so I was already very busy. But this, another book that I was reading, I, I it took me weeks. Like I, I did not, I really don't read a lot of the books on my TBR in May, because I just didn't read as much. And I was very busy to be fair, but I tend to find a way to, I find ways of fitting in things in the most casual of ways. I mean, I, I fit in podcasts while I was away, which means I could have fit in audiobook instead. And the fact that I wasn't compelled to pick up this book, sadly says something about it, at least from my perspective. But again, I go back to the fact that it's a middle grade book, and I have to wonder how much of that crafting the narrative just didn't work for me because it's middle grade. But let's, I guess, take it a step further. Like when I mentioned the not being much of a, of a plot that I get invested in, um, I felt like the, the plot points, the characters even, didn't feel entirely real. And part of that, of course, is the fact that we're dealing with children, right? This is a, a child story following a, a child protagonist. And as an adult reading it, there were things that were said and interactions that just felt unnatural um, if this was real. And I know I'm probably asking too much of a middle grade book, but I do feel like there's a, there's a fine line you could walk that manages to make maintain the, I guess, the, the veneer of a, of a child narrative, a child perspective that is still, that's, I guess, still is recognizable to um, an adult. I, I think about, uh, say, Room, the the book, the thriller book, or was it really a thriller, more of a drama, um, about this woman and her child <clears throat> being trapped in a, in a room for, for years, and a child being born there, and the book follows the child's perspective. And the writing is entirely, because it's, it's the perspective of the child, it's entirely childlike, but there is an inherent adultness to it. Now, again, that's adult books. Maybe it doesn't quite work, but I just feel like there's a fine line that could be walked. Maybe that's what we mean. So I will say, though, that while I wasn't that invested in the story, what I did notice that while well, I had a problem with the overall structure, and like it, it just felt very middle grade. It felt very uh, made for children. But what I do want to give credit to the story is that there is this overarching theme being explored about good, bad, and our perception of people and how we judge them, and the reality of how people can change and evolve and grow, and how it might not, how the nature of what is good and what is bad is not always straightforward. And that I think is also, I guess, when we think about what the book has to say beyond mythology, that message right there was, I think, pretty well conveyed. And, and it was part of what made me want to push the book from more than being a three star to closer to a four star. And, and I think that that essential message that, that I think was the intent of the book was really well conveyed. I'm leaving the book more positive than negative. I think I would give between three and a half and four stars, having decided exactly. Probably basically similar to, again, seasonal fears. But I, I will say it was, it was more disappointing than anything because I, I had really high hopes for this one. And I don't know if it's, an, again, a reflection of the book or of this the genre, not the genre, but like the, the age range. I mean, it's not being for me. But we'll see as I begin to explore a few more books in, in the genre. I do think this is a series, and I, I, I'm not ready to commit to not doing it or reading more. I don't know. I have a feeling that... If I see the arc and I get granted it, I'll probably read it, uh, just to give it a second shot. But if I don't get the arc, I probably won't bother. So we'll see if I continue it or not. But if you're a fan of middle grade, I think you might like this more than me, to be honest. And I still think there's a lot to appreciate, especially when it comes to the world building, which is so wholly unique. And I, I love a story that pulls from existing mythologies. Those are, those are always, I think, really exciting when we have this, this new perspective, this new look at something more ancient. Overall, those are my thoughts for Zachary Ying and Dragon Republic. I am curious, have you read this book or are you considering checking it out? Either way, let me know in the comments and have a great day and I'll see you all next time, okay? Goodbye.